Hi, welcome back. In this video, we will talk about the last key components of a Java NIO, which is the selector. As uh, shown in this image, that uh, a thread is used for both tasks for both the accept the connection and handle the request. And we know that uh, most of the time there is a period of uh, waiting time for the data to get transmitted and arrive at the server. That means that uh, let's say here the server answers to the client, we are okay to uh, to we're okay to ready to make the connection. And then the client send the data and uh, arrives uh, the, the request or payload arrives uh, server at this time. So there's a period of waiting time yeah, this period of waiting time is lost, is wasted actually, is wasted in each thread or each connection. So for a busy server, this adds up waste will lead to the waste of uh, lots of um, computing resources. Let's uh come. Let's take a look at. That's why we, the we introduce the selector. After we introduce the selector, the things change. The thing the process changed. First, the server start the server socket channel and register with the selector. To and the selector will observe the connection or accept event. When there is a connection made, this event, the connection event is triggered and uh, the server socket will register the channel or register the socket and channel to the selector. And then the selector will observe the read or write, OP read or OP write events for this socket, for newly created socket. So this process is for accepting the connection and uh, they can be put into a single thread. Once we reject our connection, reject our connection channel and uh, socket channel to the selector, and uh, let's say for the client one and the client B or client or maybe three or four or maybe a hundred or thousands of uh, connections, they send the data to the server the selector will observe the read and write event. Once the selector get the, says that, finds out that the data has already arrived at the server, it will fire a thread, fire multiple threads to handle the request. So the advantage is that Instead of uh, up between the make the connection on this box and handle the request, instead of using the a single thread for each connection, we just use one thread to handle the connection, uh, to accept the connection for thousands of uh, clients, and uh, the selector will. 
maybe fetch fetch uh, hundreds or several ready or arrived data to pass it to the th different th threads to handle the request. After each thread finish their processing, they will get back to their client. They will write back to their client. So these two component, the accepting the connection and the processing the request, they're separated. Okay, let's uh, see what what the what, uh, see some code, how to use the all these three components: the buffer, channel, and the selector to create a highly high performance server. Okay, I have uh, prepared the code. Let's. Uh, create the package and the class, we call it select uh, NIO, no, NIO, we call it uh, NIO select per server. We will just copy over the prepared code and uh, have a closer look at it. Import the missing class, import selection key. Selector, iterator, set, socket channel, oops, socket channel, and uh, transect, wide buffer. Okay, I think we still have one error. We still have one error. Let's see what it is. Oh, this one, I think. Okay, we are good. Okay, let's uh, take a close look, look at this code. The first, we at line 18. We create, we use the open method to create the server socket, so server socket channel. And then we bind on line 20 and 21, we bind our server to four lines port. And uh, next on, on line 23rd, we configure the, we make it our, so, so our server socket channel non blocking. And uh, on line 25, we use the open method of the selector to create the selector. Then we register our server socket to the selector on line 27. Then after this, after all this, we are done. So our NIO select server is ready to accept the connections. And we put the code to process the connection event and the read, read and write event in the while loop. So our server will be able to handle multiple connections. We tell the online 32, we tell the selector to pull the 
the operation system every two seconds. If there is, if there are no, if for all the registered socket, socket channel, there is no event ready, the select will, will be zero. This select method will return the number of, uh, here we say it will return the number of keys. That's possibly, that's already. And uh, if there are events ready, we use the select keys method to get the set of selection key. For the selection key, we convert, we use the iterator. We use the sets iterator to iterate through, to loop through the items. On line, 40, on line 41, we get the key out and on line 42, we we check if it is uh, acceptable. Acceptable, acceptable means that uh, uh, it's for new connection. So for the new connection, for the 42 to 48, this block of code is to handle the new connection. For each new connection, we get the socket channel and register it here on line 48. Register the, register the socket channel as shown here on this image. Here we register for the fourth step. We re re register the socket for each connection to the selector. And then this is for the new connection. And uh, this block from line 940, 45 to, to 71 is for the, for handle the request. Actually, this block of code, we can extract and make, uh, put it in the thread pool. So, that uh, we that we will um, achieve what we illustrated here, multiple thread. For now, we only use the uh, one thread. And uh, for the readable, if if the connection sent the data, the data request arrived in our server, uh, our server operation system already copied the data from the kernel to, uh, to to the memory space for our GVM. It's ready, it's readable. Then we will just use, get the first on line 40, on line 53, we get the socket channel and uh, we create the byte buffer, but, uh, but, but buffer to read the data, read the data into, and uh, we echo, we echo the message. We printed the message on the server's console and echoing the message back. After that, we close the socket. To uh, please pay attention to line uh, to line 74 to avoid handle or process the same event twice or multiple times we need to uh, remove the current processing key from the from the fr from the iterator okay let's uh, run this server for the client, I will just reuse the NIO client we made before. 
as you can as you can see this time instead of uh, using the uh, thread sleep to put our thread into sleep we 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 just need to check whether there is a there is a connection event or a op accept event and uh, next we will run the client the first client and run the second client as you can see as long as we as soon as we run the client the client is connected the message is print on the console and uh, the socket you see the although we run this cl two client on the same machine they have the different socket for the first client the socket is this one 26 and 38 and 6 and for the second is 20 uh, uh 62 and uh 13 39 and 0 okay let's uh write some message um select uh, one for the client one enter and uh, for this one we say selector two you see we get the response from the server for both clients 